It's such a relief. And my, I called my husband at work. After you called me and I told you that they were gonna donate a heater. And he said, it's so wonderful because he was so worried about me. Right now in News 8 at 6, a Davenport couple getting some help after they've been without heat for seven days. The local business stepping in to donate after our story. And we're live at the Riverbend Food Bank where kids and organizers getting ready to announce the winners of the Student Hunger Drive. We're live and we'll show it to you next. Live from WQAD, this is News 8 at 6. Good evening, I'm Jim Mertens. Thanks for joining us. Denise has the night off. And tonight, one teenager is in custody, four others still on the loose, after police say they escaped from the Mary Davis Juvenile Detention Center in Galesburg last night. Damport police say the teens forced their way out of the home and stole a staff member's car. That car and one of the teenagers later found near Goose Creek Park in Davenport. Both the center and Knox County Sheriff's Department have not released any information about just what happened before or after that escape. That worries neighbors. I'm hoping that they'll improve security and it won't happen again. This isn't some minor thing that even though they're children, they still are criminals. Police say those teenagers do have ties to the Quad Cities and do have a criminal record. Right now, Davenport police say one boy from Mary Davis is being held in the Scott County Juvenile Detention Center. News 8's Marissa Sulik now joins us. She found out that if the others are found, the Davenport Center may not have room for them. Marissa? Jim, the Scott County Detention Center is already holding 13 juveniles, but the center's director says the facility can hold up to 16. Any more in Scott County will have to send them somewhere else, and that costs the county money. When the Davenport Center is full, juveniles can be sent up to three hours away. That costs $125 to $200 a day for Scott County, and that doesn't include transportation costs. Last year, Scott County spent $400,000 sending kids to other facilities. We would try to keep them as close as we can to home, ideally. So, you know, the, we, we always want to strive for, like, family reunification and making sure that they're getting visits and things like that. So we try not to send them far away. Now, Kaiser says there are simply too few beds in the Davenport facility. As I said, 16 juveniles can be housed in Scott County, but Kaiser says they typically handle about 21 kids each day. Jim. Well, and a study done on Scott County Detention Center says it will actually need 64 beds by the year 2039 based on the current numbers and what they're expecting in the future. Right now, there's no timeline or final plans for any expansion. Investigators released the names of two Des Moines County deputies accused of shooting a man in Burlington. Police say Deputy Dylan Beard and Sergeant Kevin Glendening shot 18-year-old Stone Graham last Thursday on Agency Street. The officers were investigating a shots fired call when police say Graham shot at the officers. He was shot in the leg, treated at the hospital, taken into custody. The investigation has been turned over to the Iowa Attorney General's office for review. We have been looking at temperatures that are actually recovering after we saw single digits early, earlier this week. <laughs> Let's put that in the rear view mirror. Storm yes. Track Hey Chief Meteorologist James Zahara wants to look forward, James. Yeah, I'm actually looking backwards, but yeah, let's do look a little forward as far as our temperatures. They will be getting better uh, in the days ahead. We saw a little bit of that yesterday, even today, as numbers did climb as high as the low to mid 30s. Now we're starting to see uh, our clouds of today give way to some clearing, and thus we're already seeing a drop in temperatures. Plenty of uh, mid to upper 20s, though. Wow, Clinton, you're already at 17 degrees. And the Quad Cities, 26. Got a size 34 degrees. The winds are fairly light. Dew point at 18. That's an indication of maybe how cold our numbers may get. Upper teens around 20, possibly by early tomorrow morning. That will promise a bit more sunshine tomorrow. And more importantly, even better temperatures heading into tomorrow. I'll tell you how much better those numbers will be and when our next chance of rain, snow, or mix could take place. Coming up in just a few minutes. Jim. Last night on News 8 at 10, we told you about a Davenport couple who's been without heat for seven days now. Today, there's a solution in the works. News 8's Ryan Jenkins introduces us to a local business stepping in to don donate, that is, some relief from the cold. It is new tonight at 6. When the crew over at Doug's Heating and Air Conditioning heard about what's happening inside this Davenport home, where there's been no heat for seven days, they said they had to step in and help. 
stepping in to a home built back in 1914. This crew from Doug's Heating and Air Conditioning says they can't sit back and let a family in their own community suffer. Seen the story last night on the news and just sparked in my head that something needs to be done about it. After a week of go-arounds with the warranty company American Home Shield, Anna Holmes was desperate for a solution. Contractors left her and her husband in the cold. Heat from the stove and these space heaters weren't warm enough. And my asthma, I get up choking and coughing in the mornings and I just get <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to end up sick over it. But after sharing her story last night on News 8, members of the community she's only been a part of for a few months are stepping in. It's such a relief. And my, I called my husband at work. After you called me and I told him that they were going to donate a heater. And he said, it's so wonderful because he was so worried about me. It's going to be a big job. A new furnace, all new ductwork, and new chimney lining, all being donated for free. I don't know how I could ever repay, you know, to have that done. For the team at Doug's Heating and Air Conditioning, this isn't about money. It's a danger to begin with. It's about doing the right thing. In Davenport, Ryan Jenkins, WQAD News 8. As a matter of fact, during an inspection, the crew from Doug's Heating and Air Conditioning noticed a need for asbestos removal in the home as well. Illinois, Iowa, Taylor Insulation, along with another local business, has agreed to donate some asbestos removal work. A fourth person in Illinois has died after being in the hospital for a vaping-related injury. The Illinois Department of Public Health says 179 people in the state are sick due to vaping. Experts are working with local health departments to investigate another 41 possible cases. A bill to consolidate police and fire pensions now heading to Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker. It passed in the Senate today after passing the House yesterday. One pension will be for police, the other for firefighters. The plan will combine nearly 650 suburban and downstate Illinois funds to try to lower the cost. The governor spoke about it in a press conference earlier today. What we celebrate here is truly mon monumental. One of the most critical long-term challenges that we face in Illinois is our underfunded pension liabilities and the surging property tax burdens that they create. This consolidation marks a vital step forward for our fiscal future. The pension plan was Governor Pritzker's number one priority during the fall veto session. Quad City students about to find out just how much food they collected during this year's student hunger drive. It's all benefiting the Riverbend Food Bank and News 8's Lauren Jackson now joins us live in Davenport. They're behind you, ready to show you just how much they raised. Jim, they are. They are here behind me. I'm going to step out of the way because they are about to give us the big reveal. Let me get out of the way here. Before we announce the winners of this year, we would like to announce the total results of meals you have provided together. If we could get the drumline from uh, Rock Island High School to give us a big drum roll, please. All right, they're still getting ready. We are going to go ahead and announce it. Okay, we're going to stay Today, with this live shot right from now. The area high schools have collected a total, if you guys are ready, of 500. And sixty-eight thousand three hundred and seventeen total meals together. All right, you guys, you heard it here. That is more than five hundred thousand meals going to Quad City area families, raised by seventeen area schools here in the Quad Cities. And tonight at ten, we'll tell you what schools specifically won. Live in Davenport, Lauren Jackson, WQAD News Eight. Lauren, this is the end of like several weeks of work that the students have been doing, and the student hunger drive for people who don't know has been going on for years. In fact, they say that this is the biggest single uh, food drive for the entire area, for the, uh, for the River uh, Bend Food Bank. Is that not true? It's a little loud in here, Jim, but I believe this is the largest one they've had and this is the biggest thing that River Bend Food Drive has to raise meals for the Quad City families. All right, a lot of fun that's going on. Lauren will have the details tonight at 10. We're going to find
find out which schools came out on top because that's the other big deal. But 568,000 pounds of uh, 568,000 meals that is that was collected this year by the student hunger drive. Once again, we'll get to the independent individual school announcements a little later on and still ahead at six getting ready for quarterfinals. The Princeton football team hosting a state quarterfinal this weekend. The unsung heroes of the Tigers coming up.